Imagine old Peter over there. That's Levi, in case you don't know. That's a different name for Peter. You thought it was for Matthew, but it's Peter this time. But anyway, you take old Peter. Andrew probably thought about him. He probably thought, my goodness, I'm the one that led this guy to the Lord. He said, it's even recorded in the Bible that I brought him to Jesus. He wouldn't even be saved if it wasn't for me. I mean, if Andrew hadn't gotten his brother and led him to Christ, he wouldn't even be going to heaven. And here he's over here, and he's one of the inner disciples, and Andrew probably could have said, why should not I be in that seat? I led him to Christ. He didn't get saved first. I got saved first. But here he is, and he's sitting over there, and boy, he's one of the inner disciples, and I'm on the outside. I mean, I'm the fourth man. There's 12 of them, and I'm number four. That's pretty high, but I'm still not sitting in one of these seats. And boy, sometimes you get looking at it that way. It's easy to look at things that way. I bet he looked over there, and he thought, you know, Peter walked on water, but I could have walked on water. I mean, he couldn't walk on his own power. If it wasn't for the Lord, Peter would have never walked on water. Peter said, Lord, I want to walk out on the water. And he said, well, come on. And the Lord said, come on, you got power to walk on water. And he said, he took his eyes off of Jesus. And he began to seek. I wouldn't have done that. I've never taken my eyes off the Lord. But you know, Peter, my brother, little brother Peter over there, He's always messing up, doing wrong. Um, I, he's always sticking his foot in his mouth when he ought to keep his mouth shut. And here I am trying to do the right thing, but yet I'm still not an inner disciple. I mean, imagine this. Peter got to preach on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 people got saved. Don't you know that Andrew had been with the Lord as long as Peter? Andrew could have preached on the day of Pentecost if God had chosen him to, but he didn't choose Andrew. He chose Peter to do so. And there's old Andrew over there. He said, my goodness, I can preach just as well as he can. I know everything he knows. I taught him half of what he knows. I mean, he didn't even take notes when the Lord was writing, telling us to write things down when we was walking with him. He had to copy off of mine. And here I am. I'm on the outside looking in, and there he is getting to preach, and all the people getting saved. I mean, he'd look down here, and he'd see Peter. And he'd say, oh, he's the Jewish apostle. I'm an apostle too. Andrew was an apostle. But... Peter was the apostle to the Jews. And Paul, you know, was the apostle to the Gentiles. And he's the main character in Acts in chapters 1 through 12. Peter's the main guy. And Andrew's hardly even mentioned over there. But there's old Andrew looking at Peter and he says, I could have been the apostle to the Jews. I could have done all that. But here I am. And God didn't choose me. Choose my dumb brother over here. <laughs> You may not have said that, but I mean, you wonder about that sometimes. I mean, Peter's probably, Andrew's probably looking over here and he's saying, you know, we got First and Second Peter in the Bible. Not only did he get to preach on the day of Pentecost, not only did he get to be one of the main apostles, the entered apostles, not only was he the apostle to the Jews, the Bible says, but God let him write two books of the Bible, First and Second Peter. It could have easily been First and Second Andrew. What would have been wrong with that? I mean, the Holy Ghost said, right, and he could have written down the exact same things instead of the top of the head in your Bible where it said 1 Peter and then 2 Peter, it said 1 Andrew and 2 Andrew. And for 2,000 years, people wouldn't even know the difference. But God didn't chose, choose him to do that. He chose Peter. You say, how come? Beats me, but that's what he did. Peter, one of the inner disciples. What about old James over here? Oh, James. It's kind of different, ain't he? <laughs> James got to write one of the main epistles in the Bible. You know, a lot of people think the Lord's brother wrote the book of James. I've never believed that in my life. Why in the world would he pick the Lord's brother when he could have one of the inner apostles? Why did all the other inner apostles get to it and not this one? I've always thought this James, and this was John's brother, I've always thought he's the guy that wrote the book of James. And I've always believed it. So well, he died in Acts chapter 12. He may have died in Acts chapter 12, but he wrote it before that then. And there he is, and he wrote that book. And there's Andrew again saying, I'm still not getting to write a book. Why does he get to write one? And Andrew looks over there, and he says, oh, James is sitting there by his brother John. They were the Lord's pets. I mean, they were so the Lord's pets that they got a pet name. The Lord didn't even, he called them the sons of thunder. Y'all remember that? The sons of thunder. Andrew didn't have a pet name. But James, he did. Yeah. <laughs> he had one. The sons of thunder. I mean, it'd been easy for Andrew to sit over there and say, I've done everything that man's done. I've took every step he's taken. I've been persecuted just as much as he has. Why'd he get a special name from the Lord? And here's old James sitting over here. 
He gets killed by the sword in Acts chapter 12. The Bible records his martyrdom death. He died as a martyr. You don't read about in the Bible. You have to go to a history book or Fox's Book of Martyrs to say something like that. I mean, surely God could have told about when he died. He told when James died and how it happened. I mean, it's just as gruesome and just as bad. He died for his faith. But his name's not there. He's the first man out. And then you got John. And I think about John over here. Old John, man, he's something else. John's a guy at the Last Supper in John chapter 13. He laid his head on the Lord's bosom. Now that wasn't a, a bad thing like people would try to make it today. But in the Bible days when they ate, they laid down. And a lot of times they would lay on these couch type things. You can eat more laying down than you can sitting over with your stomach crunched over. You know? And they'd lay down. It was comfortable. And they called them couches. You'll see it in Esther chapter 1 and other places. In John 13, that's what they were doing. And they were laying there eating. And they probably didn't have enough seats for everybody. And they were all just laying around. And they probably had a small little room that they's in. And it was all piled up in it. And John's laying over there. And he's just leaned up against the Lord right on his bosom. That's his chest. I mean, he's close to his heart. And he's getting to hear that blood pump that bought you your salvation. And John's a type of the church. He's John the Beloved. And I bet Andrew's looking over there and thinking, he just thinks he's closer to the Lord than anybody else. I mean, all through the book of John, he never referred to himself as John. He referred to himself in the third person as the one whom the Lord loveth. Talking about himself. He said, God loves me. I'm the one the Lord really loves right here. You don't read that about Andrew. It'd been easy for Andrew to get disgruntled with that, but I never read where he did. I never re read where he did. I think about John. John was something else. He got to write the Gospel of John. And then he got to write First and Second and Third John. And if that wasn't enough to put the cherry on top, he got to write the most popular book that's ever been written, the book of Revelation. And John wrote that book, the book of Revelation, and he got to tell about the rapture of the, of the church. He got to tell about the tribulation period, the mark of the beast, the antichrist, the devil doing all that he did. And then he got to tell about the Lord coming back and, and the second coming and whipping the antichrist and Armageddon and World War III, Armageddon and World War IV, Gog and Magog. And he got to tell all those stories. And I mean, everything looked good. And he got to talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb and the Lord reigning in the millennium. And he got to go out into eternity and see all those things and write down what God showed him. Now you know Andrew was faithful enough to have done the same thing. But for some reason, God chose John. John's the only apostle that did not die a martyr's death. He was persecuted severely. They took him and they put him in a um, tub of boiling oil. The I couldn't imagine that. Then they put him out on the Isle of Patmos. It's a rock island where they had a, out there where they had, uh, where they was breaking rocks as a prisoner. And he's an old man, lived to be about 100 years old, somewhere in that neighborhood. Not Andrew, he had to die early. John got to live to see all those things and write that off and then probably died peacefully in his sleep. I bet Andrew thought, my goodness, I could have done any of that kind of stuff. But he didn't get to do it. See, it had been real easy, real easy for him to look at that and say, my goodness, I can't take it. Now I think about people, and I think about people in church, and, and really I, I had kind of was thinking about this for that men's meeting because we had a lot of men up there. And I thought, you know what? There's a lot of men and women, and maybe sometimes more women than men, that if they can't sit in one of these three seats, they can't serve God. I'll just be honest with you. It's not easy to sit in one of these three seats. These seats are hard. And ever the spotlight's on you and people's watching you. But I'll just be completely honest with you. Even as hard as it is, it's never easy to serve God. I think it's harder to sit in this seat and serve God than it is in one of those three seats. I mean, they're the ones that are patting on the back. They're the ones that are, everybody's looking to. They're the ones writing the books of the Bible. They're the ones on YouTube. They're the ones everybody's talking about at church. They're the ones doing this and doing that. And here's a guy over here that's doing every single thing they're doing, but the difference is he's not seen like they're seen. He's behind the scenes, but yet he's still faithful. He's sitting in that seat. He never gets out of it. He stays in his spot. He's here every time he ought to be here. I'm telling you, there's something to be said about Andrew. Andrew's a good man in the Bible. Preachers are the worst. I've seen a lot of young preachers jealous of older preachers. 
I've seen older preachers sometimes get in these seats after a lifetime of ministry, but yet they serve 30 and 40 years in this seat. And they say, well, look at them. Everybody respects that guy. Yeah, because he sat in that seat all of his life. He earned his spot is what he did. And he got over here and God used him. But let me tell you, if God would have never moved him, he'd been as faithful in this seat as he ever would have been that seat. That's how it would have been. But a lot of people look at it, they don't see it that way. They don't understand it. A lot of jealousy in, in preachers. <laughs> it blows my mind. I don't even understand it. When I see one of my preacher friends, their church is being blessed, or get the, I'm happy about it. I really am. If every preacher we send out has a bigger church than us, that's all right. If that's what God wants, I'll be happy for them. I'm not going to be happy if our church is not doing right now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, but we're not in a competition is what I'm saying. We're not in that competition. I got preachers that won't even talk to me because I preach revivals all over the country. And they think, well, that ain't right. He shouldn't be doing it. I've never asked to preach a revival. They call me. They must be desperate. I don't know what's wrong with them. But anyway... I've never done, I've not, it's not about that. God wants me to do something, I'll do it. If he doesn't want me to, I won't. The, to me, the best place to be is in your home church. That's the best place in the world. If you're a pastor, yet it's funny. But it takes a real disciple to sit in Andrew's seat. Always watching the other three right there while you're serving him too. Same thing. Now you say, what's different about Andrew? Well, there's some things about Andrew you ought to know. And the first thing is this. I don't believe that Andrew served God for a platform. Too many serve the Lord so they can have a larger platform. And there's a lot of preachers like that. There's a lot of preachers, their motive is to serve God so that they can raise up. And I believe that's why God doesn't use them sometimes. Because their whole purpose is they're serving God so they can advance their ministry and advance their name. And for them to be a big time preacher, God will never bless that. God's not looking for somebody that wants to advance their name or advance their ministry. He's looking for somebody that wants to advance his name and his ministry. That's what God's after. God will never bless somebody doing it the other way. But yet there's a lot of people with a platform out there. Andrew's platform was the Lord's platform. You see these celebrities doing the same thing. LeBron James, he's the biggest joke in the world. He thinks because he can play basketball that he ought to tell you how to vote. I bet his IQ ain't over 80. Oh, well, he's got to be done. You say, well, how do you know that? He wouldn't believe like he believed if that was the case. <laughs> you got to be a special kind of stupid to believe like he believes. <laughs> but anyway, you say, well, you shouldn't be talking about black people. Okay, Candace Owens is one of the smartest ladies in the world. How about that for you? Right back at you, buddy. <laughs> Her IQ is a lot higher than LeBron James, and she's a lot better looking too. But anyway, you got old LeBron, he's got a platform. We've got to tell people, we've got to, we've got to do this in ball games. Let me tell you something. When you're getting paid by somebody, you shouldn't have a right to advertise anything. When you're on the clock, go, what, what, what you ought to do is go to work on Monday morning, and what you ought to do is start putting you on all these different shirts, that are at, talking about all these political agendas, and saying, I, just, I know it's time to start, but I want to kneel down here, and I'm going to do this while it's time to start, and I'm going to talk a while. No, you'll get fired is what's going to happen. What do you call that? You call that privilege is what he is. He's privileged is what he is. Somebody say amen, I'm telling the truth. You're pri- you, don't, you aren't privileged like that at your job, but he is. But here you've got old Andrew right here. He's not trying to push his own agenda. He's trying to advance the church. He's trying to advance the Lord. And I mean, when people say, boy, Andrew, I know you're right there behind the scenes, and man, those guys are getting all the honor and all the glory. And Andrew says, it doesn't matter. It's all for the Lord. We're serving the same God. I mean, they may see them, but when I mess up, people don't see it like they see it. When they mess up, I mean, everybody knows Peter sticks his foot in his mouth. But I've done it a bunch of times. It's just not recorded in there. Because I'm not one of the inner disciples. He didn't serve God for a platform. I'll tell you something else. He didn't serve God for a position. Andrew was an apostle. These men are apostles. You say, who are, we don't have apostles today. But we had them in the Bible days. And these men were apostles. And there were 12 of them originally. And before the Bible was complete, there was 20 of them. Counting the Lord. And anyway... You've got Andrew over here. He's an apostle just like they're an apostle. But he's not one of what they call the main apostles. He's not an inner disciple. He's not one of them. But it made no difference to Andrew. 
He wasn't seeking a title. I doubt Andrew was out there campaigning and said, I want to be an apostle. I tell you, I hope the Lord lets me. No, the Lord picked that. And the Lord did that. So he said, Lord, if you want me to do it, I'll do it. If you don't, it makes no difference. I'm going to serve you anyway. That's what I'm going to do. Andrew served the Lord because he loved him. That's the right reason to serve God. I read about Charles Spurgeon. And Charles Spurgeon was a great preacher in the 1800s. And he said that he wanted to be so close to the Lord that he could look up into heaven and say, Lord, I just want you to know that I love you. And he said he wanted to be so close to him that the Lord would look down and say, I know, Charles, I know. That's how we ought to be. We ought to want to have that kind of relationship with him where we love him, but we know that he knows that we love him. That's all that matters. It's all that matters. I mean, Andrew served the Lord because he loved him. I've heard people say, well, if I get a position, I'll, I'll get in and be faithful. Once you get faithful, then you can get a position. I've never understood that. I've had preachers before, they said, I can't keep these people in. You think I ought to put them in a Sunday school class? I said, no, that's the worst place to put them. They can't even get their own time. My goodness, you can't get their own time. That says, I don't even care about you kids. That's what it's saying. It doesn't mean they don't, but it's what it looks like. Man, I want to be there ready, and I want them to know that I'm ready to serve God. That's what I want them to know. Boy, it's not that way. People are funny how they act. He didn't say, I mean, he could have done all kinds of things, but, you know, Andrew considered how much the Lord loved him, too. I think a lot of people have forgotten that. They've forgotten how the Lord loves us and how much he loves us. Did you know the Lord Jesus Christ died for the first man out just as much as he died for the first three in? He didn't die more for them than he did him. He didn't love them more than he loved him. Sometimes people get that way and they say, well, nobody notices me. I'm just a old widow or woman in church. I'm just a widower in the church or whatever. No, but the Lord notices you. You're just as important to the Lord as anybody. I, I'm the pastor of this church. I've been nearly 20 years. That blows my mind. I've been preaching here for over 20 years because I came in October of 2000 when I first started preaching here, filling in. And anyway, during that time, that's been a long time back. I'm not more important than anybody else in this church. You say, well, you're the pastor. What's that got to do with it? That's a God-ordained position. Even though I'm the pastor, that's his position. I'm still a person. Did you know people can be replaced? You say, well, if Brother Derek, well, some people probably say, well, I wish he would. You know, probably so. But there might be one ten times better. Don't you think... I mean, God can do anything he wants to. I'm hoping I don't leave. I'm not trying to leave. I'm not saying that. You know what I'm saying? People are funny like that, though. People get thinking, well, they're more important than me. No, they're not. Everybody here is important. You got Lee and Gavin up there. They're sitting up there. You don't even see them. They're up there in a the bird's nest, it looks like. They're in the balcony, running the sound. So I didn't even notice they was up there. If they weren't doing their job, you'd notice it. You'd notice it then. A sound guy is like a referee in basketball. The more you don't realize they're there, the better job they're doing. That's, that's just how I look at it. That's how a sound guy is. We got people that clean this church on a weekly basis. You say, well, clean the church? I wouldn't want to clean the church. Well, you shouldn't be above that. Nobody ought to be above it. You say, well, when nobody notices them, no, they don't notice them, but if they never cleaned it, you would notice them. There'd be trash and your snot rags that you keep throwing down and fingernail clip. <laughs> He gave me the creeps doing that stuff. Clip them at your own house, not to God's house. That's sick, you know. But anyway, and then dirty diapers stinking up the place, and who knows what. But yet you don't notice that stuff. You say, why? Because there's faithful people that come every single week and mop and clean and do things so we can have a nice place here. There's so many things just like that. So many different spots. I notice when people miss the choir, little, I mean, people you wouldn't even expect... They're here half the time, and some of them can really sing. They could really help that choir. But I notice they're not here. You say, why don't they? They can't get all the way in. But boy, if they could, they'd be a help. So well, they never get noticed. They don't get to sing a part. Who cares who sings the parts? What's that even matter anyway? We ought to sing for the honor and glory of God. That's what we're here for. People are crying. I never get to sing a part. And you ought to be glad. Andrew didn't serve the Lord for a position. Let me say finally, Andrew didn't serve the Lord for a promotion. Some people come to the Lord so they can have a promotion. 
Watch election. It's election time. And we're not as much as some of the churches in town, but I've seen it. I've seen people show up at church that I've never met before. And I say, well, who are you? And they'll tell me, uh, by the way, I'm running for office. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not going to help you here. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're not here to try to get votes for office. That's not what we're after. But, you know, there's people that do that. There's a lot of politicians that's done that. Just imagine how much having a friend like Jesus can promote somebody. I mean, cause how about somebody take somebody that's in the commercial fishing business like Andrew? Could you imagine having a friend like the Lord, how he could promote him? Oh, you can't catch fish? Let me put out my new video. The Lord showed me how you can take the net and throw it on the other side and catch more than you can even haul in. Oh, you can't pay your bills, can you? The Lord showed me how to go catch a fish and it'd have a coin in its mouth so you could pay your bills. Everybody be buying. He'd have his own show on the Outdoor Channel. I mean, they'd say, fishing with Andrew. Man, everybody be all about that. All the celebrities be fishing with him. It'd be something else. He'd be visiting the Bass Pros and they'd be signing autographs and pictures and stuff. He didn't do that. Andrew didn't serve a God so he could get a promotion. He didn't do it for that way. Andrew served the Lord so that he could be a fisher of men. So he could promote the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that's the way it's supposed to be. Now look at Andrew, the first man out. Now look at Peter, James, and John. Everybody knows about them. Maybe not everybody knows about the ministry of Andrew. And he's got some things he did in the Bible you may not know about. But there he is, and he was faithful, and he got called when these guys got called. And in Acts chapter number 1, when you're reading, he's right there with them still after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. He's still right there with them. Mentioned fourth. Even though he's a, one of the first ones mentioned in the Bible, he ends up being fourth. But he's just as faithful at the end as he was in the beginning. That's how we ought to be. We ought to serve God all the way, no matter what. Time's running out anyway. We might as well finish strongly and do right by God. We need some folks that will do it, men and women and children, that will serve God and get in all the way. Let's stand together and we'll have an invitation. Y'all just leave your chairs. Everybody find y'all going down.